Hello! This video tutorial gives you an overview of the profiling functionality in WISE. Profiling is a very important part of your audio development cycle as it allows you to monitor the activities of the sound engine so that you can test and troubleshoot the different aspects of your game audio. By monitoring the activities of the sound engine, you can detect and troubleshoot specific problems related to memory and CPU usage, voices, events, streaming, effects, and so on. The WISE Profiler allows you to profile specific aspects of your game audio at any point in the production process on any platform. You can profile locally within WISE to test prototypes or investigate issues even before any audio has been integrated into the game. Of course, you can also profile the sound within the game itself by connecting to a game running on a remote game console. Before jumping into a few examples, let's take a quick look at the different components of the WISE profiler. WISE has a dedicated profiling layout to help optimize your workflow. To switch to the profiler layout, use either the F6 shortcut key or select Profiler from the Layouts menu. The profiler layout contains three main views, the Capture Log, the Advanced Profiler, and the Performance Monitor. The capture log records all information coming from the sound engine. This can include specific activities, such as events being triggered by the game, or a change in state or switch. The capture log can fill up with information pretty quickly, so you may want to filter the log to display only the types of information you are interested in. For example, you might only want to record information related to events and actions or information related to a specific WISE object or game object. The Advanced Profiler displays a wide range of very detailed information about the inner workings of the sound engine, including information about each playing voice, memory and streaming bandwidth, effect CPU usage, as well as loaded sound banks and individual media files. The information is displayed on the different tabs in real time as it is captured from the sound engine. The performance monitor displays information about the performance in terms of CPU, memory, and streaming for each activity performed by the sound engine. The information is displayed graphically in real time as it is captured from the sound engine. To the left of the graph view, are a series of key performance counters that display the actual performance at each point in the graph. You can review the performance of each counter at specific points in the graph by dragging the performance monitor time cursor. You can configure the performance monitor to display only those counters that you are interested in. You can also set limits by specifying min and max values for each counter in the graph. Now that you have a basic understanding of how the Game Profiler works, let's see it in action. Before we start our capture session, we should specify the type of information that we want captured. This is done in the Profiler Settings dialog box. Although you can capture all types of information, this can have an impact on WISE's performance. By limiting the type of information that is being captured and displayed, you can Get a more responsive profiling experience with WISE. Save CPU time in-game by not calculating the data. And save CPU time in WISE by not processing or drawing the data. We will remove a few of the data types that we don't need for our example. As we mentioned earlier, you can profile different aspects of your game audio even before it has been integrated into a game. For our example, we will troubleshoot a problem we are having with our minigun. 
For some reason, the fire sounds can't be heard, so let's run the profiler locally in WISE to see if we can figure out what the problem is. The first thing we have to do is start the capture session by clicking the Start Capture button in the toolbar. Now, let's play the minigun event from the Soundcaster. Right away we can hear that something is not right. Let's stop the capture session and take a look in the capture log to see if something strange is going on. There is already a lot of information in the capture log, so let's filter out some of the information. Since the fire sound object seems to be the problem, let's filter the log to show only the information related to that sound. To do so, select Custom in the Wise Object section and then type Fire in the corresponding text box. This is much better as we now only have a few items in the log. If we look closely, we can see that the fire sound was played with a delay of 900 milliseconds. Which is good, but right after that, we can see that a set volume action changed the volume of our fire object, which doesn't seem right. If we look at the event, we can see that there is indeed a set volume action on the fire sound that changes the volume to minus 96.3 dB. Somebody on the team must have added that while tweaking the levels of the other components of the minigun and forgot to turn the volume back up. We can leave the set volume action there for now, but let's change the volume level to minus 2 dB. Let's play back the event to see if that solves our problem. That's it! Problem solved! This is just one example of the kinds of issues you can solve by profiling locally in WISE. Now that you know how to profile locally, let's look at how we can profile the audio in a game. For our example, we will use the AK Cube game that ships with WISE. Let's say that we are running this profiling session to make sure that the number of voices playing simultaneously, as well as the overall CPU usage, remains within our allocated budget. Since we want to keep an eye on the number of voices, we will want to add it to the graph view of the performance monitor. To do so, click the View Settings icon and then select the Number of Voices option in the Show in Graph column. You may have noticed that two of the entries in the graph view are highlighted in red. We disabled these data types earlier in this tutorial when we selected the type of information we wanted to capture. Since no information will be captured for these data types, we can simply remove them from the graph view. We are now ready to connect to our game over the network. With the game running, click the remote button in the WISE toolbar. WISE searches across your network to find all WISE sound engines that are currently running and adds each one to the list in the Remote Connections dialog box. If your game doesn't automatically appear in the list, you can manually connect to it by clicking the Connect to IP button and typing in the IP address. To connect to a game, simply select it from the list and click Connect. Once connected, WISE displays the connection in the toolbar. Now, let's start our capture session by clicking the Start Capture button in the toolbar. WISE begins to populate the capture log with all data coming from the sound engine. For example, entries are created when banks are loaded, events are triggered, game syncs are modified, and so on. If we look at the other views within the profiler layout, you will notice that they are updated in real time as well. Performance graphs are created for each counter in the performance monitor. You can have WISE automatically scroll through the log and performance monitor as it captures data by turning the Follow Capture Time button on. Now, let's take a look at the Advanced Profiler. Although we are particularly interested in the information displayed on the Voices tab, the other tabs contain valuable information as well, 
including information on memory, plugins, sound banks, and so on. If at any point you are having trouble understanding what information is being displayed, you can always click the Views Help button to get detailed descriptions of every option within the view. The help is context sensitive, so it will display only the relevant information for the currently selected tab. This of course is true for all the views within WISE. Let's stop our capture session to see if any issues arose. As a general rule, you will want to look for errors appearing in the capture log and spikes in the graphs of the performance monitor. You can scroll through the performance monitor graph to investigate specific problem areas. The solid blocks indicate places where the captured information exceeds the graph's minimum or maximum values. You can expand the range for a particular graph to get a more detailed representation of the solid block areas. Notice that as you scroll through the performance graph, the information in the other views is automatically updated. You can review the actual numbers and percentages at each point in the graph by looking at the performance data list. Since you may not be able to analyze all the information at once, you can have WISE record your profile session and save it to a file. You can then load it back into WISE at a later time or even send the file to a colleague for further investigation. To record a profiler session, you must select the Save Profiling Session on Disk option in the Profiler Settings dialog box. To load a previously recorded profiler session in WISE, simply open the Remote Connections dialog box and then click Connect to File. Select the profiling session you want to review and click Open. The entire profile session is loaded into the views of the profiler layout. Be aware that WISE overwrites the existing file each time a new capture session is started. So if you want to keep the current profile session, you will need to rename the file. Although communication support is available with both the profile and debug builds of the sound engine, we recommend that you use the profile version because it has been optimized for communication and better represents the actual metrics of the sound engine. It is important to note that you cannot connect to a release build of the sound engine. It is also important to note that the numbers reported in the profiler are not an exact representation of what's going on in game. The actual numbers are actually lower than what is reported due to the overhead required to run the profiler. That's it. You now have a basic understanding of how to use the WISE profiler to test and troubleshoot audio locally and in your game. For more information about profiling, refer to the Profiling section of the Help.